Good afternoon, everyone. Yes, sir. 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 Y
Whether the use of FEC is copyright material by Rambo is considered to be fair use. Philosophy section 52 deals with fair use. It is humbly summoned to the court that the Chronicles of Astria, the use of this, uh, the use by Rafa of the pictures for the state, is not to be considered mm -hmm. fair use. Your logic in the respondent's memorial itself. If you 
text saying fantasy visual in quotes as soon as so the images are uploaded. If I use your code, if I upload an image, yes. the watermark gets on yes. automatically. Yes. That's free. Putting up the that watermark. That process is free. Yes, you know. For people to come, like Rav Dukh had come and taken a contract, for that we need to buy a specific license which he did not. Issue 3 states whether training of creator from by ASI amounts to infringement and is it considered excluded as fair use. Virachak has humbly submitted in the Supreme Court's tribunal to that the training of creator from by ASI amounts to infringement and should not be considered under fair use. The said issue has been divided into two sub issues. First one being whether training of creator from by ASI amounts to infringement or not. Your logic here is again referring to section 51 of the Copyright Act which talks about when an infringement could take place. It is clearly stated that an infringement could only take place when any person without a license granted by the original owner or the registrar of copyrights, he uses that particular uh, content either to exercise an exclusive right which only the original owner has or it uses that content to basically gain any kind of monetary benefit or profit. Your logic that is exactly what has happened because your logic, if we refer, uh, your logic, I like to to find the book who will be number 20 of the book. Yes. Your logic herein, ASI has themselves submitted in the, in the proposition it's written that they develop the basic of We have to be from there. You're watching the second paragraph number three. Data speed. Data speed. You're watching ASI has trained data from to work in a way where it would just skim through uh, various uh, internet platforms and take up content, which is exactly what they've done in this case without taking a specific license. You're watching if you refer to paragraph number 11 of the moot proposition. It is stated. Visitors to FTC's website can explore and search its collection before purchasing the license for specific content. If ASI wanted to use the content which is on there, they could have purchased a specific license your logic, which they did not decide to do. Instead, they decide to steal the content and use it for their own personal gain. Substantially different. 
and merely clearing the water mark, can it make a difference? Yes, sir, Roger. If we uh, see section 2, clause A, which talks about adaptation, I am making it for In relation to a literary or dramatic work, any abridgment of the work or any version of the work in which the story or action is conveyed wholly or mainly by means of pictures in a form suitable for reproduction in a book, this would cause uh, attract the clause of adaptation. In the present case, despite the fact that later on, whatever it might have been made, but originally the content was not his to use. When he took it, he clearly could see the FEC watermark. The, what, the picture that he submitted, when he was about to use the content, he could clearly see it right there. Despite that, he did not bother to take the FEC specific license to purchase. Watermark, everybody knows your logic that a watermark clearly shows that a content belongs to somebody else. When it's written there in big bold words, fantasy visuals, it shows that it belongs to somebody else. Did you have any agreement with Raghav before he uploaded it? No, your logic, because he did not approach us. So he uploaded the content? No, your logic, he used our content. He did not upload anything. He took it from us without that. Means and what legal work means. You are reading it from the section of copyright. Yes, you are. Yeah, please start. You are also in the present case when uh, ASI claims data.com, which is an AI software, to go through content on the internet and take it. They could have also bought a specific license, which is what the terms of FTC clearly state that if you want to use the pictures, buy a license. However, that has not been done in the present case. You are also furthermore. Uh, Kindly never come to page number 22. Any kind of permission or license. 
with that your logic I can do my argument that k dot from uh, u by asi does amount to infringement, does amount to adaptation and should not be considered fair use. Just one question. <coughs> you persisted very well. Just one question with begs an answer. Again, I come back to that. The mere presence of watermark, assume, I mean, will it suffice to give a clear indication of infringement? Number one. So basically, suppose somebody committed a mistake, and by mistake, that watermark is left there. But the work that he's relying on is substantially different from the original one, so as to give an impression of a totally distinct work. Distinct and original work of the, the last person who's, who's using it. Will it amount to infringement of Yes, copyright? Because firstly, your logic, um, it was not a mistake because the picture seems to himself, he himself submitted, you could see the watermark on it. So he knew this content belongs to somebody else first. Second point being your lordship, section 51, which deals with infringement, that when would infringement happen? Yeah. It clearly states. Let's read that just quickly. Section 51. When copyright infringed. Copyright in a work shall be deemed to be infringed when any person without license granted by the owner does anything, uses it for any kind of profit. In the present case, if we stick to this definition, rather the exclusive right in this case was FPCs to use that content to maybe monetize it. Raghav firstly, first essential is without a license. He did not obtain a license. He could see the watermark in the picture he submitted. On the website there are clear terms of use that you need to purchase so the your, your license. argument would be the adaptation itself would be a use of my copyright work. Yes, your option. Because by definition, he did not take a license from the owner that is FPC. Yeah. May my co-counsel proceed with issue one? So your argument is issue number two. <coughs> and three, your option.
students, the council on the behalf of appellant will be dealing with issue number one and four. Issue number one deals with whether the copyright success in the works created by Rafa using KT Prom and in whom so used in the Chronicles of Astro. It is humbly submitted before the Honorable Supreme Court of Timbuktu that the Raghav's work using the creative prompt and so used in the Chronicles of Astria does not subsist any copyright and amounts to copyright infringement so you material owned by the FTC. To bring the attention of the court, I would like to mention the section 14 of the Copyright Act which defines the meaning of copyright. Copyright means the exclusive right subject to the provision of this act under clause C, which the rights include the right to reproduce, to store, or depiction in two-dimensional, two three-dimensional. Uh, Council, I want to pause here and ask you, uh, would it be possible for anyone to generate images from the set AI platform without doing anything? Is, it, is these images generated by your AI algorithm on an auto basis, or you require human prompt? Your logic, a basic human prompt is required to be given what, what is to be needed or basic, for example, if here, if the artist needed the image of the of scenery or background, a basic input has to be given, but the algorithm is so done by the ASI, this actor, that is the creative prompt and which produces the image. So the original thought process of creating the prompt lies with the so, the, with the your lordship, the, the, the Raghav has the authority to give the prompts, but the source or the images which has to be taken cannot be controlled by Raghav. It is the training data set where which has been trained by the ASI. The creative prompt has been trained by ASI upon the basis of that data, the images are generated. The image selection process is not uh, controlled by Raghav. Are you familiar with the recent lawsuit that's been filed by the New York Times against Open AI in America? And if so, what is the argument taken? Would you want to correlate those arguments in the facts of your case? I'm not sure, sorry, can you repeat? Are you familiar with the recent, the recent copyright design uh, infringement lawsuit that's filed in America? Sir, uh, I'm not sure, I'm aware. I know the few of them, which I don't know is, is that the particular one. No problem, please proceed. Thank you. Further, Your Lordship, the copyright is a right which the owner of the work has and who, who's without his permission copying or reproducing the work in which the copyright subsists cannot be done. Sorry, can you just step back? I mean, I'm sorry to interrupt. But step back a bit. What, what does copyright lie in? Can you just explain to us that for the act? Sir, copyright, uh, your lordship, copyright. Section 14. Yes, sir. But your co copyright indicates the certain rights which the owner, exclusive rights which the owner has. If the copyright indicates that a particular <coughs> owner uh, has a certain rights for his work which is protected by. Created by the Raghav. Lordship, if 
ਇਹ ਅਧਿਕਾਂਸ ਸਮਝਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਵਰਕ ਸੋ ਜਨਰੇਟਿਡ ਬਾਈ ਦੀ ਰਾਗਵ ਇਸ ਨਾਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਟੈਕਟਿਡ ਬਾਈ ਦੀ ਕਾਪੀਰਾਈਟ ਬਟ ਦ ਵਰਕ ਸੋ ਜਨਰੇਟਿਡ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟਿਵ ਫਾਰਮ ਵਿਚ ਹੈਜ਼ ਦੀ ਓਨਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਟੈਕਟਿਡ ਬਾਈ ਦੀ ਕਾਪੀਰਾਈਟ ਐਂਡ ਆਰ ਨਾਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਡਿਊਸ ਵਿਦਆਊਟ ਬਾਈ ਦੀ ਹਿਊਮਨ ਆਥਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਵੈਲ ਆਲਸੋ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਕੁਡ ਰੈਫਰ ਟੂ ਦ ਪੇਜ ਨੰਬਰ 15 ਇਨ ਦੀ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਨੰਬਰ ਪੈਰਾ ਨੰਬਰ 4 
but also point out that copy would also mean and include the making of another digitalized artwork that fundamentally or substantially resembles the original. You are not sure here the watermark which in any way which it has the copyright is the form the intrinsic part of any image. It is the only way which determines and showcase that a person has a right over. If an image doesn't contain the watermark being the name, I cannot know whether the, or any image is protected by copyright or not. It's the watermark which shows or, or indicates any user that it is protected by copyright. No, but this also goes on to say, please read it again with us. <coughs> so this also goes on to say that making a copy is not just limited to duplicating by uh, storing it in any technology device or other, but it also points out that copying would also mean and include the making of another digitized artwork that fundamentally and substantially resembles the original work. So copying would mean that when you fundamentally substantially move, they are present so watermark with lots of the purpose. Your lordship since here the facts are silent, but I assume that there has been fundamentally copying of this because here the watermark which was the which is the is named after the company, which is fantasy visual company. It is not an easy to copy each and every letter of the work if the such a name has been copied in in its entire way. It is we, the council assumes that the facts are silent that the one of the substantial part has been formed. Is that your case? Yes, sir. Thus, the council submits that the Raghav has fundamentally copied the image owned by FBC as stated in the paragraph 6 and does not consist of it, subsist of any copy. Well, can I proceed to issue 4? Well, issue 4 deals with the Uh, please. So it's, uh, can you specify it? Because as far as you know, this 
the precise form of memory. Sir, sir, author means under the section two of the copyright act, as the written the under the sub issue two. It is the specific query. Under the sub issue two, author means the any persons who creates it. Here the council summons that the person should not only be considered a natural person, but but also the juristic person with here the ASI, which put its skill and labor in training the AI that is creative prompt. So as to allow the creative prompt to develop and generate it. Also, you are watching in the one of the recent cases in the foreign judgment. If you will refer Lee versus Lee, footnote number twenty eight and page number twenty four point six. Point six: The Beijing Internet Internet Court held that AI generated content may be granted copyright protection. Where it possesses an element of originality, thus uh, the council want to state that the ASI is the author of images, so you do not want to ask. Also, your lordship, uh, the any person may originate another work in the same genre form, provided he does so from his own resources and makes the work is so originates a work his own by his own labor, industries, and bestowed. Thus, if a person uses the resources which are not original, no copyright can be claimed by such person. In the given case, Raghav uses the program which is creative prompt to generate his artwork as per the licensing rules of the ASI, which is which state that the, all the works generated by creative prompt belongs to the creative prompt and no person shall claim shall claim copyright upon it. Also, your lordship, I would like to state. One of the large cases of the, in the page number twenty four, para number thirteen, which also established that the author copyright of a work exists with the author's tangible expression of an idea. Here, as discussed before, the Raghav it was not not the Raghav's expression. Page number twenty five, point thirteen. That the work must be original. That is the author's tangible, author's own tangible expression of idea. Here, the, it was not Raghav's idea which worked to use, which not. It was the AI, the ASI data set, which allowed that if, if the ASI had not trained in a certain set of data, had not trained the creative prompt with uh, with a certain set of data, that data will not be used by AI. Thus, it was ASI which uh, which provided the expression or the images that shall be used in the image. Also, your option when we see an image, AI image generated, you we we have to provide the text prompt to so as to. I'm not sure that I will be taking too much. You have you have to provide a text prompt that guides the creation of new image. However, you are not the sole creative force as explained because it's the Both the use of data set, set as well, and the uh, so culmination and algorithms used by the creative prompt to culminate all the images so as by the data. Thus, while the human user provide the initial creative spark with the prompt, it can be argued that AI system contributes as much more to the final. Well, our chair, if you permit, I would like to proceed with the chair. Yes. No, sir. Under the Indian president, it's not. But with it, that I said with it, dynamic of time, there has to be development and. So, what is the target that we can pursue? Act. Yeah, it's not covered under the. Yes, option. But with the uh, president, I am mentioning Lee versus Liu. There has to needs to be change in dynamic. And even in uh, so the Indian government. Fine. So you are resting your case to section two, fourteen, seventeen, fifteen, and fifty-two. Yes, sir. Okay. Fair use. Seventeen or two is the definition of covering. But you are also admitting that AI would not fall under the. Can you just speak okay. uh, section two quickly or quickly? Two D. Or whatever two D two percent. Section two is an interpretation clause. Two D defines author. Author means in relation to the artistic work other than photograph the artist. And in relation to any literary, dramatic, musical, or artistic work which is computer generated, 
in person who causes what they want to be created. Who causes the work to be created? Yes. So, originator of the work will get the copyright. Yeah. Anybody who has the original work. So, do you know, do you uh, agree with you that uh, you are yourself coming out at the end of this particular provision? My mind is that rather than causing this particular creative work to be created, more so you are at best only a computer platform. Yes. So, you are only a, your algorithm is not defined either under the IT Act or under the copyright language. So, so therefore, how can your algorithm grant you copyright? You can say anything. Is there a stop against so law? Much, that's what the issue has come up with the, uh, with the change in time and this issue has to be dealt by the Honorable Court. Uh, and this, though there is no precedent in the Indian court system, but the time there has been insertions, for example, the 2D6 which I read with the use of for the computer program, it was not initially there. It was amended by the amendment of 1994. Similarly, the, the council of these before the Honorable Court because there has been a new development in the technology which needs to be considered. Thank you. Any questions, sir? In the light of issue raised, arguments advanced, and the authorities cited, the Council for Appellant humbly summoned and praised that the Honorable Court be pleased to adjudge, hold, and declare. No copyright subsists in the work created by Raga using Creative Prompt and in the Chronicles of Astria. The Chronicles of Astria is an adaptation. There is infringement of FPCs in copyrighted material. Further, the training of Creative Prompt by ASI amounts to infringement and is not excluded as fair use. And the ASI is the author and the owner of the images used in the Chronicles of Astria. And or pass any order other order it may deem fit in the interest of justice, equity, and good consent, all of which are humbly submitted and respectfully submitted. For this act of kindness, the appellant shall be duty bound forever. See, in the prayer, I just saw passive remarks to take away. So, you, your co counsel has argued that uh, they have not even alleged, much less substantiate the allegation of fair use. So why would you ask for a declaration that it is not a fair use? Because it's a, it's a defense. It's a defense which is you know, usually taken. So you can't say that, you know, declare that the defense is bad. You know? So normally you don't ask for this kind of thing. But it's okay. That's fine. Normally you don't ask. When your map is called, you just stand up and you know.
Lordship, in the case of Associated Publishers versus Persia, that is in my memorial on page number 17, it sets a precedent regarding copyright and duty of derivative works. 
worship, the issues are very different, and in various issues, uh, first. You're saying the ASI, just wanted to read it. And, uh, the AI did it. Raghav and Ujwala did not distort the image. I'm just defending Raghav and Ujwala. Do you think you're going to handle the software? <laughs> <laughs> So just repeat our limits. Do we have any lawyers on the commission who have the software? Or any lawyers or, 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 or anybody who would like to represent? <laughs> you can have a mic here. Anyone who knows the case? We like some people to present the software company. We give them five minutes. Your lawyer should provide co-counsel to do that. Not your side. <laughs> we want them to do that. Anyone who is not from their side, some team can represent the strat. What is the software name? Yeah, bro, this person may have. Somebody who can give us an idea that they are prepare after their rebuttal, you will come for the company and you will say especially on one issue that you distorted the image. They did not. You have to defend. You have to defend. Okay. Five, five minutes, no? Five minutes. Prepare. The Lord should lay back some servants' text. In order to constitute infringement, firstly, there must be sufficient objective similarity between the infringing works. Second, the copyright must be the source from which the infringing work is direct. Your Lordship, if the test simply just says, if we see the two pictures at the same time, there should be a difference between them. If there is a difference, then they would not constitute for the same picture. And that is what is happening here. Lordship, may I proceed with issue two? Issue two is whether Chronicles of Asturias yes, and Adaptation. Just from all the there is no deceptive similarity or similarity between the two pictures. Uh, yes, you are saying that, you are saying, I mean, I, I, I'll explain, I mean, I'll be loud. You are saying that there is no similarity between the pictures, right? Yes, sir. Is there any fact in the root problem which says so? Yes, sir. Uh, to support what you have just, you know, submitted. of the moon proposition. It says that distorted. Yes. So after distortion, whether there is any similarity or not, the fact is more or less silent about it. There is some distortion. But whether it will be a deceptively similar or it will, you know, totally you see, it appears to be sorry. So it, it appears to be it will be continue to, you know, look similar or appear similar. Or it's totally a two different pictures will come out. You know, it will be a completely a different picture. Fact, is there any, you know, factual aspect which has been clarified in the book? Uh, you know, you, you were referring to some clause, please. And, and also, you need to defend this use of word distorted. Because distortion cannot be said to be the original creative work. You know, lent on some particular work so as to give it a unique feature. So you, once you use the word distorted, distorted is, you know, sometimes it assumes that it has been purposefully distorted so as to give it a color of being different, you know, from the original work. So you, what you are, your argument is that we did so much of work, spent so much of skill, originality, creativity as to render the, the new work of yours totally unique and different from the original work and so as to, uh, you know, segregate them by a good distance. But when you say distortion is something, it, you know, conjures an image of self. somebody has done something mischievous, you know, just to be able to get away from kind of a blue you know, order. So then you need to defend that. Again, your worship, the image that was produced by the AI, that had a distorted version of the uh, watermark. We did not intentionally dis uh, distort the watermark and then started using the word. We have received the issue too. Issue two is whether Chronicles of Astria is an adaptation of the infringing of FPCs copyrighted material and is it considered fair use? The Lordship here, adaptation means, according to section 2A, that defines the word adaptation, which is basically a change of format. A copyrighted work is converted from one format to another. And uh, section 2A, Section 2A, uh, Clause 2, in relation to any literary or an artistic work, the conversion of the work into a dramatic work by the way of performance in public or otherwise. You know, actually the work, again, the work that was created by Raghav and Ujwala and the work that was presented by ASI or that was present on FPC's website are completely different works. It cannot be said that it is an adaptation.
definition of the other because there is no kind of similarity that can visually be seen. Raghav did use the image uh, that was present on FTC's website, but he did not use it completely as it was. He added his own skill and labor, again defining the sweat of the brow test, and again, minimum uh, volume of creativity test that was present there. You are saying you did not use the image as it is. Yes, you are not sure. On which they have the copyright, which is their image, they are the owner. Your Lordship, they, they do have the copyright of the image that they have, but we are saying it. You are saying it was a fact. But we didn't use the image, but it was not similar. Should I use the word not similar? Should I use the word distorted? Should I use the word not A complete new word, Your Lordship. Unique. Unique and new word. Yes, Your Lordship. Unique. After seeing that, you created a unique word. Yes, Your Lordship. As unique, I'm right. Yes, Your Lordship.
ownership uh, 70B. Here again, the ownership and the authorship would go to Raghav because he is just talking about his own work that is Chronicles of Astria. He is not talking about FPC's website's work or the work that was generated by the AI. He is just merely talking about the copyrighted work, of his own creative work, his own original and unique work. Thank you, Your Worship. With the permission of the court, Council to come and take issue three. Thank you. In which year copyright uh, as a subject is taught here? Which year it's taught? Uh, fourth year. So in our college it's taught And all of you are fourth uh, so Second year. Second year? Yes. And what about you? We are in third year. In third year. So you also not been taught copyright now? We worked pretty hard. Considering that also you've done a good job. This was not an easy year. I said, I'm considering that also. <laughs> not only that. If your object is satisfied with issue one and the content seeks permission to give. Creative advantage in our 
finally depth it in read integrate an imaginative digital artwork based on user input creating from streaming process is transformative in nature as it involves the selection coordinations and arrangement of pre-existing data to create new and unique digital artworks is your training platform uh, training business or function only limited to academic, you are actually generating money as right? Also, what gives you the right to go ahead and use the copyrighted works of others for your training purposes? Because that does not qualify with the fair use under the law. Yes, Your Lordship. Under the section 52, uh, there has been no mentioned subsection that, uh, uh, that, a, that a data program can use another person's work for training purposes. But it has been mentioned that for educational purposes, in general, a copyright uh, artistic work, a literary work, or any dramatic work can be used. For example, in Oxford versus Rameshwari, there was a case uh, in Delhi High Court where for educational purposes, it was acceptable that copyright has been done. But because it was, the, the whole element of educational purposes was included, it, was, uh, it, it came under section 52. In our case, we are talking about training of our AI software. Your Lordship, um, in the whole proposition, um, para
but there was also these uh, elements of artworks by our side put in those pictures. Uh, for example, your lordship in. So yeah, that's what you mean by imaginative digital work. So it's, it will not be a kind of a, you know, uh, uh, you know, it will be unique. It will not be something that we, like, you know, already produced and then just, you know, furnish it to that person who's asking to do. So it will be a bit of an originality of using AI. Yeah, that's what you're trying to do. Yes, you are. For example, there is an aqua Gemini in which if you put uh, flying turtles, so it will show images of turtles who have wings. Now in this case, what happens is that they do data scraping from different websites. They select pictures. Like from one website, they are selecting a picture of a tortoise, and from one website, they are selecting, for example, a picture of a bird, and then they are combining this and producing it to their users. For example, okay, in, yes, yes, so you are data scraping, right? Yes, your logic. We are. Yes, is it possible? Yes, that your website, your software. Yes, your lordship. It is uh, again. And then, yes, that image captured by you is given to Raghav as the one created by you. Your lordship, our key over here is that we are not your that. Defense, not your, your, our defense over here, I apologize. Our defense over here is that the image that we are producing is not exactly the image that we are data scraping from their website. We are adding our uh, artistic touch you to it. You want to disappoint Appalachians? You have to answer this in your work. You want two points which I have just asked. You have to answer in the work. Yes. Yes, Doctor. Uh, yeah. So uh, we are we are giving them that kind of artistic uh, touch in the image that they want us to do to that image. For example, for example, uh, there was this. If you may let me, there was this one case called Theater D Opera. Spatial, which was created by an artist called Jason Ellen. In this, the US Copyright Office declared, declared that uh, uh, in this particular case, uh, Jason had not got the authorship of the image that was created because it was said that the software was the, the uh, AI generated software was collecting data from other websites and then creating their own artwork. And in this it has case, used 62 websites. Yes, your Lordship. And it has used and then it created its own image. Yes, your Lordship. I don't know this case. Yes, your Lordship. So our our uh, our uh, software works somewhat similarly. What we are uh, standing over here is that uh, we are using the help of uh, modicum of creativity. You're not in the wild, wild west where you can act like a Robin Hood. Okay. I said you're not in the wild, wild west where yes. you, can, you can act like a Robin Hood yes. and steal from the rich and give to the poor. Well, are a network service provider under Section 2 of the IT Act. Yes, sir. You are mandated under the law to exercise due diligence. So that means so, what are the authorizes you to number one, copy? And number two, how can you argue, given the statutory provision under Section 79 of the IT Act, that this uh, copying does not tend to amount to injury? Your Lordship, um, our terms and user terms and agreements towards our users, if I may read, uh, para 13 of Move Proposition, below that, copyright and licensing, ASI had <coughs> license that does not, uh, sorry, uh, it grants users a limited license to use, display, and modify the AI generated artwork for personal use. What our software was making sure was that this artwork is not being used for monetized for uh, monetary purposes or for gaining economical gain by its uh, users. What we were making sure uh, was that uh, it is not indirectly infringing copyright of someone else, of a third party. The lordship our claim over here. My brother's question is that the end user may not be you. You know, you are maybe doing it for personal use. Yes, but sir. you may be doing it for your commercial purpose because you use it and then you know pass it on to your subscriber. So that usage itself can amount to infringement of somebody's copyright. Your, That's your, what I think. You know, Chip, I respectfully disagree. <coughs> Our software was completely free of cost. In Move Proposition Para 3, it is given that the most striking thing about the software was that it was completely free of use to even professionals. 
our whole perspective was not to gain monetary or economical profit from this website. Okay, you may not be see you may not be aware yes. of this, but I know a question would be very nice for you. Then what is your source of revenue? It could be through advertisement, it could be anything. It may not be the end user paying for it, but as long as you are making money out of the use of somebody's copyright, you are you can be said to be infringing that person's copyright. Your Lordship, our program was still under training as uh, the case. The issue three was whether training of creative from by ASI amount to infringement. Our A R A I software wasn't. Uh, wasn't out there in the market. As I say, it wasn't in the same competing market as FPC. Uh, any of the work that ASI was doing was not hampering a uh, FPC's uh, economical aspect. Uh, and that is why over here we are uh, claiming that we are taking the defense that uh, the training of creative prompt is not amounting to it. Roger, if I may proceed to the next question. Yes, please. Actually, is there any reason they have not said anything about the fair use? Yes, Your Honor. Uh, our whole uh, point, like I mentioned, the whole monetary and economical focus po point that I was mentioning was uh, was uh, under the whole fair use purpose that we we did not want it to gain any economical or monetary uh, benefit. Our whole perspective was to provide a software where students, where um, artistic uh, artistic people like Raghav can come and maybe uh, create or learn from this uh, AI software. Let me proceed to the next issue. One question to uh, yes. all three of you. Can this, uh, has any one of your three entities happened in this moment in the company software? Register your work in the work of AI. Yeah, 
Kilochip in Eastern Group Company versus BB B, uh, versus DB Motor. It was observed that copyright protection finds its jurisdiction in fair play. When a person produces something with his skill and labor, it normally belongs to him, and the other person would not be permitted to make profit out of the skill and labor of the original author. Kilochip in this case. The authorship over here, what we are defend, what we are claiming is that the authorship is lie should lie with Raghav as the final skill judgment and uh, as the final skill and judgment that was incorporated in the images used by Chronicles of HGR were uh, inputted by Raghav. Uh, in moot proposition. As a judge, I would like to see the you know the case file of the uh, the matter between you and Raghav. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but we'll demolish your case completely. But doesn't matter. Let's proceed. That that case does not exist. Your lordship, in uh, as a, in another case called Theatre the, 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 the Opera Special, created by an artist Jason Allen, uh, the U.S. Copyright Office declared that it lacks human authorship and thus falls outside the purview of copyright law. Currently, in Indian jurisdiction, there has been not many cases of AI softwares, and that is why for possible. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. No no we are using cases of US and UK. Your logic, um, your logic in India, a work must involve a minimum minimum degree of creativity and not be a product of only skill and labor. Output produced by AI tools may not satisfy the requirement of creativity required by copyright protection. If they are viewed, uh, your logic. U.S. court has also declared that non-humans do not have a statutory standing under the Copyright Act. However, according to Copyright Office, works created to, through text prompts and lacking any further creative input by the human user, as in the case of a generative AI tool, would not be copyrightable because these prompts function more like instruction. In our case, these prompts were given by Raghav, but then there was also additional skill, labor, and human judgment inputted by Raghav. For the uh, for the images that were used in Chronicles of Asia. Now you are asking for I would just like to cite the last case. In Peace Publication was a rural telephone service. The court rejected sweat of the broad doctrine, which rewarded copyright based on the effort put into compiling facts. The case held that purely factual compilations, such as the white pages in a telephone directory, are not protected by copyright because they result from effort alone and do not require skill and judgment. From the above mentioned case, we draw a distinguished line between a work created out of effort and a work created out of skill and judgment, such as the work of the respondent in Chronicles of Asia. The work of the respondent when received comments such as seamlessly blending or comparing storytelling with visually stunning artwork, it is depicting the distinctness of the artwork which was the result of skill and judgment. The fame of the comic of Chronicle of Asia was because of the human judgment and skill that the respondent had applied rather than the AI generated software's artwork. The logic what we believe is that the copyright law aims to protect the original expression of ideas and it also recognizes the importance of promoting progress. Ultimately, the question of authorship in works generated by AI raises complex legal and ethical considerations that require careful deliberation. As technology continues to advance, it is imperative for lawmakers and courts to strike a balance that encourages innovation while protecting the rights of the creators. Your logic is
Yes, sir. Let me, let me ask you one question. Yes, this is just direct from the uh, Before that, let me ask you, my question take five minutes or so. You asked that before. Have you worked on it? Yes. Then the company you yes, was there. Would you like to add something to what she has said? Uh, yes, sir. In the so, as a reminder, you see what is a mic? The mic is a spread of the board. Yes, so, we don't want a judgment on any of three companies here, three people here. We just tell us you, you are a software company. What do you, have you done some infringement? Sir, uh, no, we have not done any infringement because. This is an AI tool which, ha which has uh, which has algorithm which is there to train uh, in to train on a, a lot of data which is available online. Infringement, it does not have any intention to infringe anyone's copyright. It does not do it uh, for any bad purpose. What it does is for a transformative purpose which comes under the exception of fair use. What we do is we look at multiple uh, sources available online and we train our software based on that so that it can create outputs which have been asked by the author. Distortion of the watermark as per in this uh, case, the AI is a tool, it is not a person who can uh, infringe the copyright and for that very purpose the images which are available on these sites are very different from what create uh, but our software created, it is very different. Yeah. So it, it does not infringe the copyright because even if the violation, if, even if there is a violation of the terms of use, it is not done for any monetary purposes. It is done to uh, train the data. It is done for uh, it is done for research purposes. It is done for research and development purposes. It is not done for any monetization purposes. No, but tell me what. I mean, merely because you're not charging the user uh, any kind of charges for downloading of, or you know, uh, making use of the whatever is available, does not mean that you are not doing it for profit purpose. So, you know, the source of revenue need not be coming to the subscribers. It could be through advertisement, it could be through several other sources. So, any revenue uh, which has to survive, it has to have a source of revenue. So, that making money itself would be through the usage of other other person's content. And that would be infringing aspect of it. So, but let's not go there, but uh, I mean, please continue, but I'm just trying to tell you, because you may not be aware of the source of revenue. Yes, sir. So, so for that uh, very purpose, I would like to mention the fact that the watermark, which was there, the watermark was still there. There was no removal of that watermark for that purpose. If we had removed the watermark specifically for using this creation for any profit or anything, we are not doing that because the watermark is still there. We are simply using a lot of uh, sources in order to obtain a creation which the author, which the uh, person who has wanted the prompt wants, was uh, asked for it wants. We are not doing it uh, to create to. Uh, for any beneficial purpose. Yeah, that's okay. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. So, how much time do you take? Five minutes? Huh? Yeah, be very crisp and clear. Be outright an infringement, but an unauthorized use of it is clearly an infringement. 
and they have not provided any kind of proof for the fact that they obtained a license. They themselves have admitted to openly without any kind of authorization. How can your visuals be captured by another platform in the data square if everything is licensed and done? Your Lordship, it can be looked at because when we are talking about pictures, a description. Yeah, I hope you understand what I am saying. Today, there are random pictures available on the website. On the web. It's a full world around there. You are saying we, if you have to take a particular picture, you have to take a license. That means they pay yes. for that picture. Data scraping is something which is in air. It can capture anything which is available on the web. How can the AI pick, pick your picture and get it in their platform without your permission if that is not having any consideration? Your Lordship, can I explain this to an example? Your Lordship, we see the brand of Reebok and we've also all seen the brand of Reebok, which is a completely, which is kind of like a copy of it. They have not obtained any information, but it's out there, they've copied it basically. Now, when we talk about something like pictures, they have to be available online. FPC as a platform has to show what content they have so that people come and buy it. Just because it is there does not mean people can come and play to use it. That is why laws are in place. That is why laws like copyright are in place. That's why FPC has put their watermark on the images. Because watermark is the only thing which so you are saying it can be data scrapped by a platform, but they can't use their name to say this is mine. Yes, sir. That's what you at yes, the most sir. that's your case. Yes, sir. Because that's unauthorized and that's against the copyright laws. So first question so was if they had picked up from your platform, they which they could without paying the money, they should not have said it is uh, Raga, Ujwala and uh, it should be your name there. Yes, your Lordship. Unauthorized use is prohibited, your Lordship, as per section fifty one. Your Lordship, furthermore, my government co counsel too had stated that ASI is still under training, data prompt, and it is not out there in the market or the world of my government counsel. Your uh, Lordship, I would just like to put forth a question then. How does ASI have a full blown copyright and licensing policy in which, in the last time, Your Lordship, if you just see para 14, it is clearly stated artisan innovation reserves the right to monetize the creative output generated by the software, the creative output which is stolen from the FPC. Answer that in your lab. I'm sorry if I'm moving as well. In para 16 of the problem, yes, it says that you are in concern with ASI without permission or compensation, they have taken the images from your portal, correct? Yes, sir. Then you say ASI's actions were in violation of every terms of use which prohibited downloading, copying, or retransmitting. Yes, so here the allegation is only against ASI. <coughs> understand my question. Your Lordship, uh, Paris 17. No, I see that. Yeah, no, no, no. That's your, you're suing three of them. Yes, Your Lordship. Because it's two different. But tell me, how do you gather this? Would Raghav and Ujwala have the knowledge that the AI is actually sent, giving them a material which is in violation of uh, any copyright? Yes, Your Lordship. I would like to say two points here, Your Lordship. Firstly, Your Lordship, uh, the basic principle of law that no, is No, forget How do you come to this? Your Lordship? Uh, Ma'am, what's your name? Understand my question. You have taken from AI. AI has taken from them. My question to them is, you did not have knowledge that AI is taking something from yes. a particular portal without any license. So you can get the benefit of no knowledge, which is available in law. The presumption is not against you. Your Lordship, could you How do you prove that they were having the knowledge that this is a particular image which has come to them is your image? That's it. Your Lordship, could you please open the move proposition panel number 18? Panel number 18. 18. Your Lordship, first point being that ignorance of law is not an excuse. Secondly, Your Lordship, it clearly states that during the proceeding of the High Court itself, Raha gave this evidence that the pictures he used, it is clearly stated, before the pictures that were used by him in the original form, they contained the watermark of FPC or Lordship. The first point being that ignorance of law is not an excuse, and second point being that when the watermark is right there, when the watermark shows that it's a copyrighted work of FPC, Raha cannot claim no knowledge or Lordship. I just want you to just address this question in one minute or whatever, two minutes. 
that they are argument in main differences that rather spending his skills, hard work, labor, or all those work which might have originated, might have, from your uh, uh, source. But they expended so much of skill and labor on it that the end product was vastly different and unique from what is available on your website. And so that copyright, it will be a copyrightable material in their own right. So how would you meet that argument? That's all. Your Roger, when we purely talk about the law in the present case, Section 51 talks about the they are saying that it's not an infringement because it's our original content. However, I brought the first point being, Raghav has himself submitted the proof of the pictures which he used with the watermark. Second, your logic, if we read section 51 which talks about the infringement of copyright, what it states clearly is, it has to be without a license for a profit sake. These three parameters according to section 51 which talks about infringement have been met in the case your Let me tell you, one case can come to your rescue and I think I know how far as that can be worth. That a case which says that it should not only be created but it should also be independent. So the moment they rely on your work, it ceases to be independent. And no matter how much of creativity has been expanded on it, it will still be an infringement. So that's the only case which can come to your rescue. But Apart from that, they have you know, uh, expanded the deposit skill uh, and uh, hard work and labor so, uh, to such an extent that the new work is totally different. Then it could be copyrighted. Your also because they have failed to establish how the new work. They keep saying it, but there's no proof. The only proof they submitted in the court are the pictures which prove the FEC's point, which contain the watermark. Merely saying it does not prove anything. You have to provide proof in the court of law. And the only proof they submitted in the high court is the watermark pictures of NPC. So they were directed to produce. Yes, your lordship, but still, at the end, they had directed to produce. He produced the picture, but he did not. You said they admitted to it <coughs> that they distorted. Please read that part again. During the proceedings, the High Court directed her uh, to provide the images of being from his use of creative form in the original form before they were modified by us. So it is not that the admission is there. Your so it is a, it, read the next line. Images provided Raghav found to have a distorted version. So it's not an admission by Raghav that I distorted it. He's even asked to give again the picture. Yes. Now, the picture this. Start from point number A and we can A. They both sit together, Ujula and Raghav, to put inputs into AI. AI does the data security. Now they have not seen your picture before that. So the inputs are original and unique. Right? AI gives them a go all around the world, collects some pictures, gives it to them. Ujula is writing something, Raghav gives those images, Ujula writes the book, digital book or whatever the book is, and that those images are printed there. Okay? Now, the, at least you will agree here that the inputs which came in their mind are original. The images can be distorted. Your Lordship, the issue is about the images. Like that. <laughs> all right, all right. It's okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. You all did very well. Yes. Anything else you would like to say? Thank you. Yes. As I said in the beginning itself, like, I uh, went later part, that uh, since none of you has read Copyright Act, considering that and, yeah, and uh, otherwise also, what would all of you done very well? Stick it up. Congratulations. Yes.
order to set for other things. I hope that we have to comply with the order. We do like to get data spread and this one.